Hi, my name's Rocco, and like most of you watching this video, I've been spending the last week or so trying to figure out what's going on with the mold effect. So let's start with what it is. There's a jar full of chain. You drop the chain out of the jar, and as it falls to the ground, it appears to leap into the air inexplicably. So while I do this analysis, I'm going to take a look at the um, chain as if it were massless, and the only thing affecting it is gravity. Uh, also assuming there's no tension in the chain, although I did some back-of-the-envelope calculations, and I don't think that the tension would change this effect very much. So to start off, let's take a look at the chain at top dead center of the curve. And this point's pretty important because there are only two things happening to the chain. There's gravity pulling straight down and velocity of the chain moving sideways. Based on those two things, we can calculate the radius of the circle that the chain is moving in at that point. Remember, there's no tension to affect that any, in any other way. As we move around the curve, there's a little bit of other stuff going on because the gravity is still pulling straight down while the velocity is at an angle. However, this is a chain. It can't stretch. So the only acceleration that matters at this point is the acceleration perpendicular to the curve. Taking a look at both of those things, we can calculate out the curvature of the chain at any point, and that comes out as a second-order differential equation that looks like this. We can throw that at Wolfram Alpha, have it do our work for us, and we get this function of the curve of the chain. And there are a couple of interesting things in this. There's the two constants that come out of the integration. Those basically just move the curve around and then gravity over velocity squared, kind of scaling the whole thing. But the curve itself is defined by log cosine x, uh, which is pretty interesting to me. I don't think I've ever seen that before in physics. Uh, so let's plot it and take a look. Well, that's encouraging. That's a shape that pretty well describes what the chain is doing, as far as we can tell. There's nothing non-physical going on here. But the interesting thing going on is that now this entire shape of the chain is defined by this curve, which means that we're going to be very dependent on initial conditions. So if we move this curve around, let's set the velocity to one meter per second and move it just so that somewhere on the upward side of the curve is going through zero, zero. And that, that's going to be what we pretend is the part that's leaving the jar. And at this point, the interesting thing is that there are no forces other than the chain on, as it leaves the jar. So there's nothing to change the trajectory that the chain takes as it leaves the jar. The interesting thing about that is that the whole shape of the chain is defined by this curve. So it can't change angle there, but the velocity is going to increase. So the entire shape is going to scale up, and that's going to create this jumping out of the jar effect that we see with the mold effect. Now, this would be pretty useless without an experiment, so let's see what happens in real life. To start, we're going to keep everything just pure horizontal on a table and see what happens. You can see as the chain picks up speed, we start to get this nice curve. And right about here, I'm feeling pretty good about my calculations. The curve is staying horizontal, and everything looks to be in order. So let's keep going. Uh-oh, what just happened? Clearly there's something else that isn't captured in these, uh, in these equations that's jumping this, this curve up in the air. Uh, but the thing that I do like about this is that the curve the chain is following looks pretty consistent, uh, even as the uh, beginning side jumps up and down a little bit. So I'm thinking that I'm explaining some of this effect, but not all of it. We can see that as the other effects in the back start to settle out, we go back to this nice consistent curve off of the table, which looks pretty close to that log cosine x that we calculated. Um, so I'm seeing something else going on, but I'm still feeling pretty good that the uh, second order differential equation has some effect. Now let's see what happens when we add a bar uh, to kick the chain up in the air as it leaves the table. All 
All right, we got a lot more mold effect right away. Some of the stuff is coming from the chain in the back, but it's definitely jumping up in the air pretty easily. And we, we can see that even when the chain is hitting the bar on the left, it's jumping up over the top of the bar because of its momentum. All right, clearly there's some stuff that we haven't figured out. What is this giant thing over here? It's way taller than the mold effect from momentum that we're looking at. Um, so clearly there's some other things happening. Let's move on and see what's going on next. In here, we can start to see that the disturbances from the left side of the chain are pulling the curve back and forth. And that's starting to do something interesting. Right here, we have exactly what I was looking for. The chain moved right to left as something pulled it back, and that jumped it up over the top of the bar. Let's look at it a little bit slower and a little bit slower. Keep an eye on the entire shape of the chain as it moves to the left. You can see it's basically staying the same. The velocity is not changing. There's nothing to change that angle. And therefore, you end up with the chain way up over the top of the bar uh, just because of the locked in shape of the curve. All right. And as we keep going, you can see it happen a little bit more. I think that was the most clear example. Thank you for watching the video. I hope this was helpful and we can watch the rest of this chain just for fun.